As of the end of 2021, I have ridden 1,157 different roller coasters, 994 made of steel, 163 made of wood. In 2021, I visited 25 new theme parks across the globe and rode 124 new roller coasters. 11 of those coasters cracked my top 100. In this two-part video, I will rank my top 100 favorite roller coasters in the world. This video is part 2, covering the top 50 spots. If you missed spots 51 through 100, please feel free to check out that video as it was previously released. This list combines both wood and steel coasters into one list. I place rides assuming I'm in my favorite seat, and I go by how the coaster is running for my most recent rides. I tend to prioritize rides with great airtime, strong pacing, and a beautiful setting. This list is all my personal opinion. I don't expect anyone to have the same list as me, and when I compare two rides, it just comes down to which one I have more fun on. If you want more information on many of these rides, I have separate reviews posted. Kicking off this list with number 50 is Montu at Busch Gardens Tampa. This is America's best B&M invert, and it may be the most forceful B&M invert in the world. All seven inversions are extremely snappy, and many pull intense positive Gs, with the highlight being that powerful bat wing. It's one of the strongest inversions on any coaster. Montu also has some cool trenches peppered throughout, and the ride is still glass smooth even after two and a half decades of operation. Number 49, Osiris at Park Asterix. My favorite B&M invert in the world has a much different layout than usual. This one has better Egyptian theming than Montu, and it's a more well-rounded ride. The steep twisting first drop has shocking ejector airtime and laterals, and then the ride has five other airtime moments as well. No other invert delivers airtime like this. Then you also have some great inversions. The dive loop and vertical loop bring the force, and the other three inversions are floaty. Number 48, El Toro at Six Flags Grey Adventure. The lone intimate prefabricated wood coaster in America has one of the best starts on any coaster. The first drop delivers crazy ejector airtime in the back, and then the following two camelbacks have some of the best sustained ejector in any coaster, no matter where you're sitting. I find the middle section has a lull with a shaky turnaround and some mild floater airtime, but then the powerful rolling thunderhill tries to launch you into orbit. The finale has some fast turns and a few weak hills into the brake run. Now El Toro's four best hills are as good as any coaster, but the ride just isn't as balanced start to finish as the coasters ahead of it on this list. Number 47, Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This RMC hybrid gets a lot of flack but I think it has some great power in the back car. The twisting first drop is incredible, blending ejector airtime and strong laterals. Then all three inversions offer great hang time, particularly the amazing zero-g stall. The turnarounds on Joker are just okay, but every single drop in Bunny Hill seems to offer a little bit of better ejector airtime than other RMCs of comparable size. Number 46, Superman El Ultimo Escape at Six Flags Mexico. This Morgan Hypercoaster is a really unique ride. The pre-lift occurs on a hillside and gives some sweet pops of airtime. Then the main layout is way more forceful than the other ground up Morgan Hypers. The first drop has the usual sustained floater airtime, but the helix section offers strong laterals with some good airtime. Then the finale, if the mid course doesn't hit, has some great sustained floater airtime and all this airtime occurs with the minimalistic Morgan lap bars. Number 45, I Speed at Mirabolandia. This intimate LSM launch coaster is like the greatest hits of their US coasters. The initial launch is solid power like the one on Maverick. The top hat delivers some powerful ejector airtime like the one on Accelerator. The Camelback has sustained ejector airtime like their hyper coasters. The rapid S transition is reminiscent of Intimidator 305's twists. The S hills like the one in Ride of Steel. And then the barrel rolls have the whip and forceful hang time of Velocicoaster's final inversion. You do have to watch your neck on the snappy transitions and hard restraints, and the final section does lose some steam, but the first three quarters of this ride are exceptional. Number 44, Maverick at Cedar Point. This intimate creation is an aggressive jack of all trades. The beyond vertical drop delivers powerful ejector airtime, 
The low turns are gray out inducing and snappy. The airtime hills try to launch you into Lake Erie, and then the surprise launch has good power and speed. Plus, the two Stengel dives are some of the whippiest elements at any coaster, as they violently contort the train. When two decent inversions are the weakest point of a ride, you know you have a special coaster. Number 43, Cyclone at Luna Park. This may be the most famous wooden roller coaster in the world, and thanks to Zamperla's investment in track work, it's running better than ever. The ride offers some of the most intense laterals of any coaster. The lack of seat dividers allow the coaster to violently throw you about and pin you to the side of the train. And the ride also has some spectacular airtime, particularly if you're in the back car. You have just a single position lap bar and no seat belts, so you really come flying out of your seat. Number 42, Formula Rosa at Ferrari World. This is the best intimate accelerator coaster. The hydraulic launch is one of the best on any coaster. It's pulsed and has two distinct kicks. Both are powerful and will get your cheeks flapping. Then you also have a full layout. The rest of the ride reminds me of Millennium Force with the sustained speed and floater airtime hills. Number 41, Swamp Fox at Family Kingdom. I heard this wood coaster wasn't running well in 2021, but it was fantastic for my June 2020 rides. Those buzz bars allow for some amazing airtime. Most hills deliver abrupt ejector airtime, which is frightening with those restraints. The coaster was smooth if you avoided a wheel seat and also had some sweet laterals on the final turn. Number 40, Balder at Liseberg. This Intamin prefabricated wood coaster is all about ejector airtime. The first drop is a dud, especially compared to the other prefabs, but the rest of the ride is packed with sustained ejector airtime. The ride is formulaic and the turnarounds do nothing, but a dozen ejector airtime moments is something I can get on board with. Number 39, Lek Coaster Legendia. This may be the king of positive G's. This coaster induced several extended grayouts. My head was spinning every time I came off this coaster. But you also have plenty of airtime too. The beyond vertical, twisting drop is a delightful combo of ejector airtime and laterals. Then you have several other camelbacks and pops of airtime peppered about, plus three spectacular inversions, with the highlight being that corkscrew over the station. Number 38, Silver Star at Europa Park. This B&M hypercoaster ran much better in 2021 than 2017. The ride was smoother and the trims did not hit. This made the sustained floater airtime in the first half incredible. Then the second half is one of the best of any B&M hyper. You get two flagector pops off the mid-course and exiting the helix. You then have another great bunny hill, plus you also have a snappy S-Bend finale and a solid helix. Number 37, Candymonium at Hershey Park. This is the best paced B&M hyper coaster in America. This one holds its speed better, doesn't have a mid-course brake run, and has great elements. Candymonium's first half has very strong and sustained floater airtime. Then the second half has a fun outward bank, a signature helix around the fountain, and some additional airtime pops. Number 36, Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. Mako's first half is incredible, one of the best of any coaster. This ride is some of the best sustained flagector airtime you can get anywhere in the world. The second half does let its foot off the gas a bit, but it's still solid. The final bunny hill gives some floater airtime, just not like the first half and then the swooping turns offer some laterals and great visuals. Number 35, Orion at Kings Island. The newest B&M Giga Coaster is pure fun. The coaster has amazing speed in the valleys and in that final helix. Then the elements are fun too. I love the sustained airtime on the first drop. The giant wave turn offers weak sustained airtime while turned on your side. And then the second half has a few other moments of sustained airtime. Number 34, Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. This coaster is a case as the most intense coaster in the world. You have an amazing first drop loaded with airtime, and then I-305 tries to kill you. The turn after the drop is a guaranteed gray out, and then this coaster is crazy transitions. Every change of direction viciously snaps your body to the side. It's so forceful that you get pops of airtime from these transitions. While I cannot deny this coaster's speed and intensity, I just have more fun the coasters ahead of it. 
Number 33, the original RMC Raptors. I've ridden both Wonder Woman and Railblazer, and both are some of the craziest and fastest paced coasters in the world. You rip through the layout. The rides are short, but spectacular. The first drop is one of the best on any ride, with a forceful ejector airtime. And you also get comparable airtime on the S Hill, the mid drop, and even the dive loop, while also getting wild laterals. The second half isn't quite as intense, but you still have a floaty zero G roll and a forceful final turn. Number 32, Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. After running a bit slower than usual in 2020, Storm Chaser ran like a bat out of hell in 2021. This coaster is an ejector airtime machine and it tries to destroy your thighs. The airtime is more sustained in the first half and then super abrupt in the second half, particularly in the trick track double up. You also have two nice inversions. The barrel roll drop has nice hang time and the zero G roll is surprisingly snappy for an RMC inversion. Number 31, Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. This is another RMC all about ejector airtime. Outside of the barrel roll drop and zero G roll, which both give great hang time I might add, and most of the turnarounds, every single element gives great ejector airtime. I love the sustained airtime of the three camelbacks and the outward bank turn best, but this rise plenty of other abrupt moments too. Number 30, Flying Dinosaur at Universal Studios Japan. This is the world's most intense flying coaster. The Fly to Lion Pretzel Loop delivers some of the strongest and most sustained positive Gs of any coaster, and the fact you experience those elements back to back is unreal. Then the rest of the ride has incredible visuals, some floaty inversions, and even some airtime pops, which feels super weird in the flying position. Number 29, X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This coaster is crazy. The seats strategically flip throughout the ride to augment the mass of elements. The near vertical drop with the flip is the ride's signature moment. But you also get some freaky airtime on the Raven turn at the start and the Camelback with the flipping seats. The far turnaround may be a dud, but the zero G roll that follows is super disorienting with the rotating seats. The final Raven turn has crushing positive G's, and the final inline twist into the brake run violently throws your body about. The ride is not smooth, it definitely has a bounce to it, but I'll take that to experience this ride's intensity. Number 28, Edge of Nika at Fuji Q Highland. This is a bigger and wilder X2. The ride takes the best elements from X2 and makes them larger, and it also fixes the ride's dead spot by making that disorienting half-half turnaround. Edge and Ica is rougher though, so it's a trade-off for the added intensity. Number 27, Hyperion at Energylandia. This intimate hypercoaster feels like a newer version of Six Flags New England Superman. The first half has the elements of an out and back, while the second half has the elements of a twister. The first drop and first camelback have some incredible sustained ejector airtime. The far turnaround is a cool dive loop, blending airtime and laterals, then the rest of the ride has smaller elements, combining abrupt laterals and airtime pops. Number 26, Taiga at Linen Maki. This intimate LSM launch coaster does a little bit of everything. It feels sort of like Velocicoaster mixed with Lisa Berg's Helix. You have the varied ride experience of Velocicoaster, including two solid launches, great airtime, and four amazing inversions. I particularly love the sustained hang time on the Zero-G Winder and the super-sized stall. Then this coaster is the special location of Helix being built on a hillside with stunning views of Helsinki. Those visuals combined with the strong elements and near flawless pacing make this coaster the best one in Finland. Number 25, Helix at Liseberg. Speaking of Helix, this is one of the best coasters in the world with a primary focus on inversions. Every single inversion feels pretty floaty and offers nice hang time. Then you also have some great airtime too. The two giant camelbacks deliver some of the best sustained ejector airtime of any coaster, and you also have some smaller pops too. But what makes Helix really special is its setting atop the wooded hill. You have amazing near misses with attractions and stunning views of Gothenburg. Number 24. Millennium Force at Cedar Point. 
The original Giga Coaster is a speed demon. This ranking assumes I'm up front, and this ride is special up there. Millennium Force is more than just a sum of its elements. The way this coaster sustains its speed start to finish is matched by very few coasters. The first drop is one of the best on any coaster, and I get one of the most sustained grayouts on any ride through the first drop's pullout through the overbank and tunnel. Then the other three hills give some nice floater airtime for variety, but the speed and visuals are what define this coaster. Number 23, Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England. This intimate hypercoaster grew in me in 2021. The new wheels added in 2019 have this coaster running faster than ever, and this gave me a new favorite seat in the back. The first half is incredible ejector airtime no matter where you're sitting, but the pops in the second half are considerably stronger in that back car. Along with that airtime, you have some great positive G's, and I just love this coaster's layout. The first half is an out and back along the river. Then the second half is a twister around rides and pathways. And unlike most people, the restraints do not bother me because they allow for plenty of room to experience airtime. Number 22, Shambhala at Port Aventura. This is the best B&M Hyper. The sustained floater airtime feels stronger than the other B&M Hypers, and the pacing is great. The first brake run doesn't occur until the end, so you hold your speed better on this one. And you have amazing visuals too between the ride's location and the fake splashdown. Number 21, Wildfire Colmarden Zoo. I still cannot believe this large RMC exists at a zoo. The first half of some supersized elements, such as that amazing first drop, the hang time filled stall, and sideways airtime hill. The second half is filled with plenty of other airtime pops and some zero G rolls as you maneuver around a hill. Number 20, Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds. New England's best roller coaster is defined by its setting. The coaster carves its way through a heavily wooded mountainside. This creates some astounding visuals and near misses by day, and one of the best night rides in the world. And the coaster has amazing pacing. The sense of speed is top notch, and you have plenty of airtime. You have two ejector pops on the outward leg, but most hills give floater airtime. And then you also get some great laterals despite the ride having an out and back layout. The ride can get bumpy if you ride further back in the train, but my advice is to ride the coaster up front where the airtime is the best anyway. Number 19, Skyrush at Hershey Park. What an aggressive ride. Skyrush tries to kill you in many different ways and I love its power. You have violent ejector airtime in the first drop in Camelbacks. Then you also have wild laterals on the stengel dives and turns. The restraints are definitely tight, but Skyrush's intensity and raw strength make it special. Number 18, Fury 325 at Carowinds. B&M's masterpiece is the world's best giga coaster. Fury has amazing sustained airtime on the first drop, the treble cleft turnaround, and the final bunny hills. But it also has some amazing twists in the first half that are super aggressive giving airtime pops and laterals. Fury 325 is the perfect mix of speed, intensity, and rideability. Number 17, Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This RMC hybrid coaster has an amazing setting on a quarry. The first drop is my favorite on any coaster with a sustained ejector airtime, laterals, and visuals all together. Then you also have plenty of other great airtime moments with the final drop off the quarry being another highlight. This coaster does get a lot of flack for how it loses speed atop the quarry wall, and while this section is undeniably slow, it doesn't bother me because you're still coming out of your seat on the bunny hills and twists. Oh, and you also want my favorite inversions in that zero G roll. Number 16, Expedition G-Force at Holiday Park. This is one of the best coasters in the world for sustained ejector airtime. Every single camelback and bunny hill catapults you out of your seat for a few seconds. And then you also have that wild first drop with powerful ejector airtime and violent laterals. It's one of the best drops anywhere. The middle section is just okay with those overbanks and S hill, but the ride's start and finish is elite, as is the wooded setting. Number 15, Schwerdes Karnen at Hansa Park. This ride is the complete package. You have some great theming in the queue line, 
and then you have some awesome indoor elements I'm not going to spoil here. And then you have a thrilling outdoor layout. The first drop is one of the best on any coaster, and it reminds me of a supersized version of Expedition G-Forces with the airtime and twist. Then you have some Skyrush-like elements between the strong airtime and vicious laterals. One or two of the outdoor elements aren't standouts, but everything else with this ride is. Number 14, Phoenix at Knobles. This ride is special for the restraints. The lack of seatbelts and just buzz bars allow every single hill to fling you a foot out of your seat. It's an amazing feeling slamming into that lap bar. And Phoenix only gets stronger as it progresses with that finale abruptly popping you out of your seat four consecutive times. I always come off this coaster laughing. Number 13, Coaster at Peony Playland. This is Phoenix on steroids. You have similar restraints, but the airtime is even more aggressive. I had to hold on for dear life. And then you also have much stronger laterals. With no seat dividers and minimal banking, you are thrown side to side along with all that airtime. Number 12, Zadra at Energylandia. Currently the world's tallest hybrid coaster, Zadra is all about speed and power. The first drop offers incredible ejector airtime, and then you haul through the layout. Every other hill delivers good ejector airtime, with the far turnaround being one of the highlights. And many of the hills also include laterals simultaneously, including that insane S hill at the end. You also have three lovely inversions, with the best one being that massive stall. You get glorious hang time, plus snaps into and out of the element. Number 11, Twisted Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This RMC creation may not duel super often, but the layout is strong enough to be a lead on its own. Each half is fantastic. I love how you get to experience that awesome first drop twice. I prefer the blue side for the superior airtime and lateral heavy zero G roll, but the green side also has plenty of airtime and that incredible stall. While the lift hill in the middle does break up the pacing, few rides give you as much bang for your buck as Twisted Colossus. Number 10, Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure. This intimate creation is an amazing blend of theming and thrills. The q Lion coaster tell a story. The first half has amazing near misses as you weave through the raptor paddock. Then the second half is more about extreme elements as you head over the water. This ride does everything well. The launches are solid. The ride has plenty of airtime with the sustained airtime of the top hat being the highlight. And then the four inversions are great. The two in the first half launch you out of your seat while also offering laterals. The stall offers wild hang time, and then the Mosasaurus roll is as good as everyone says with the insane laterals and ejection forces. Number 9, Fly at Fantasia Land. I loved this Vacoma flying coaster far more than expected. The way the coaster is integrated with Rootberg is special. The visuals of flying past buildings, under structures, and over pathways is magical. No other flying coaster mimics the feeling of flight quite like this ride. And then the ride's elements were much better than expected. The valleys and turns delivered powerful positive G's towards the back. This is one of the best coasters for positive forces. Then there are several airtime pops scattered about, which is a really freaky feeling when you're in that prone flying position. You then have two fun launches and two solid inversions for variety. This is a super long ride that just had me smiling ear to ear start to finish. Number 8, Shivering Timbers and Michigan's Adventure. This CCI wood coaster is arguably the best coaster in the world for floater airtime. This rides nearly one mile of track, and every single hill delivers good to great floater airtime. I could not believe how long I spent out of my seat. Then the ride also mixes in some great laterals on the turnaround and final helix for variety. And this ride is still very smooth, despite size and length. Number 7, Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. This is one of the most bizarre hyper coasters in the world, but I love it. This coaster is a fast paced blur with a special setting on that ravine. And it also helps that you have those trains. You have a super freeing lap bar that gives you a shocking amount of room for a coaster of this scale. The first half has some incredible positive G's in the first drop. The second drops pull out and the giant overbank. Then you also have some incredible airtime. The famous second drop down the ravine 
gives good airtime, plus a free-falling sensation due to its length, then the final hills offer some insane ejector airtime. You barely return to your seat in between pops. Number 6. Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City The original RMC Wood Coaster may be short, but this ride excels in every other area. The first drop offers a breathtaking view and powerful airtime, then Outlaw Run charges through the woods at breakneck speeds. It's one of the best settings for any coaster. The pacing in this ride is unreal. The only time you slow down is the final barrel roll, when it's advantageous to do so for hang time. The rest of the ride is a flurry of ejector airtime and speed, and it's augmented by all those trees nearby. Number 5. Untamed at Wallaby Holland This coaster feels like a miniature steel vengeance. It has a similarly world-class pacing and powerful ejector airtime. You barely have time to return to your seat in between elements, because Untamed repeatedly launches you from your seat. And then you also have 5 awesome inversions. The double stall at the start is my favorite, with that super sustained hang time, but the others also get you out of your seat. Number 4. Ride to Happiness at Plopsaland Pan. This mock extreme spinning coaster unlocked the full potential of the model. This one spins faster than Time Traveler and has a much wilder layout. The launches themselves may not be super forceful, but the centripetal force from the spinning sure is. Then you have an exciting mix of ejector airtime and inversions. The broken up top hat delivers insane ejector airtime going up and down, and the final few hills also launch you from your seat. Then the five inversions are exceptional. They're some of the best of any coaster. The Jojo Roll and Flying Snake Dive have some of the best sustained hang time on any coaster, especially because you're often spinning throughout them. Then the other ones are extremely disorienting. Add in top-notch onboard audio, and you have a ride that's unlike any other currently operating. Number 3. Voyage at Holiday World This is now the best wood coaster in the world. Voyage has three distinct sections, each with their own flavor. The first half feels like a hyper coaster, with the giant camelbacks loaded with floater airtime. The turnaround section is a frenetic blitz of laterals and quick pops of airtime. Then the return run feels like an out and back wood coaster on steroids, between the sudden airtime pops and sharp banking. Holiday World takes amazingly good care of this coaster to keep it running smoothly, and this rides an endurance test in the best way possible. It's fast paced, super long, and engaging start to finish. Plus that wooded setting creates amazing visuals by day and legendary night rides. Number 2. Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point This massive RMC coaster is advertised to have the most airtime of any coaster in the world, and I believe it. Steel Vengeance has nearly two dozen airtime hills. The larger elements in the first half have more sustained airtime, particularly on the top hat and outward banked hill. These are two of the best hills in the world for sustained ejector airtime. The second half has more aggressive pops of ejector airtime. You also have four wild inversions that'll get you out of your seat, lots of near misses, and insane pacing. Steel Vengeance has nearly 82 seconds of prime ride time, and it's stuffed with high quality elements start to finish. And coming in at number one is Lightning Rod at Dollywood. This RMC creation may have been converted partially to a steel coaster, and it lost a lot of trees around the ride, but it's still my favorite coaster. Lightning Rod has everything I could want in a ride. A breathtaking setting on the mountain, incredible sense of speed, flawless pacing, and explosive airtime. And I love how this coaster only gets stronger as it goes. It starts with an underrated uphill launch and a very solid and large first drop. Then you have sideways airtime on the giant wave turn, and that far turnaround. The rest of the ride maintains the blistering speed and has crazy ejector airtime, most notably on the quad down. That really is one of the best elements in the world. And night rides on this coaster are particularly special because there's no light on the other side of the hill. Those are the 50 best roller coasters I have ever ridden in my world travels. Let me know what you think about this list, or any of the coasters I mentioned down below. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.